Got my buddy Dan here to, to help me out. Weld the bar in between the struts here before we put that partition in. nut that I needed to be anchored back so get okay. that last one and we're all good all right sick so now that we got it welded in I'm gonna go ahead and angle grind it uh, all nice and clean get all these little boogers off and everything and then uh, start mocking up the partition on the top which is gonna be the Lexan uh, window mount so pumped really pumped that was a kind of a big milestone so I could start actually mocking things up Where it's at in the process, I'm pumped on it. See, I'm gonna have to work on like this over here. This gap here, you can't really have that. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just toss this bottom part out the door, and I'll mount the top Lexan mock-up piece right here, and then make the shape to fill the, the gap here. That way I can be a little bit more accurate with uh, I guess the template for that little partition. I was gonna originally weld that part in, but I think I'm gonna end up making it out of aluminum and bolting it in with riv nuts on the back side. That way the whole thing can come out. You know, I think that's a kind of a safe way to do it in case I ever have to replace uh, parts of it. But I don't know, we'll see. I'm pretty sure that's the route I'm gonna be going. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, sick. So even though uh, I got this in, it needs to be 100% sealed. And if you can see on the bottom there, it's got this big gap, right? So I'm going to cut this, or I just cut this piece of aluminum right here. And on the inside, I'm going to place it just like that, right? So that it covers up the gaps. But then also I have a way to, uh, you know, remove that, you know, if I need to for, for any reason. So yeah, going to mock it up on the inside and... See how it looks. All right, so I just set it in there. A couple parts hit, so I had to go ahead and cut it and cut out a couple little small intricate details to it, as you can see. But now it fits pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out, clean it up a little bit, make sure there's no sharp edges. Then I'm gonna drill two holes, rib nut it in, and then the small, tiny little gaps on the left and the right, uh, because it has to be 100% sealed, right? I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of silicone there. I just didn't want a bunch of silicone all over the back of the car. Well, shit. So, uh, I went to rivet nut my little aluminum piece in there and I kind of fucked up. So, uh, what happened was, if you guys can see, there's not enough height, uh, right here, sorry. There's not enough height right here to get the rivet nut up and down so that you can pull the actual rivet nut. So um, what I did was I actually took the top end of the rivet nut tool apart, right? And then I got a, uh, a 12 millimeter socket right here with an extension so that I can put it on top and then kind of just hold the bottom with a 19 millimeter wrench, open end wrench like this. That way I could pull the rivet nut without having to use the rivet nut uh, puller, which is like, you know, 12 or 13 or 14 inches high. Uh, this allows me to pull the rivet nut with only like four or five inches of space. All right, so I just set it in there, a couple parts hit, so I had to go ahead and cut it and cut out a couple little small intricate details to it, as you can see. But now it fits pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out, clean it up a little bit, make sure there's no sharp edges. Then I'm gonna drill two holes, rib nut it in, and then the small, tiny little gaps on the left and right, uh, because it has to be 100% sealed, right? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of silicone there. I just didn't want a bunch of silicone all over the back of the car. I really hate that stuff. Well, shit. So. Uh, I went to rivet nut my little aluminum piece in there and I kind of fucked up. So uh, what happened was, if you guys can see, there's not enough height uh, right here. Sorry. There's not enough height right here to get the rivet nut up and down so that you can pull the actual rivet nut. 
So um, what I did was I actually took the top end of the rivet nut tool apart, right? And then I got a, uh, a 12 millimeter socket right here with an extension so that I can put it on top and then kind of just hold the bottom with a 19 millimeter wrench, open end wrench like this. That way I could pull the rivet nut without having to use the rivet nut uh, puller, which is like, you know, 12 or 13 or 14 inches high. Uh, this allows me to pull the rivet nut with only like four or five inches of space. Now you have to make sure it's straight, otherwise your rivet nut's gonna be all jacked up, but there you go. Okay, so what I did is I ended up notching the uh, aluminum part here um, and then putting bolts with these big washers just to allow me to take up all that extra space because if you have a fixed hole then you can't really put pressure and make it real nice and tight up against the the metal there right so I notched it that way uh, I could still keep the washer over it to put pressure down but then also push it all the way forward like that up against this uh, metal all right looking good let's go check to the side Sick. Perfect. Whew. What's up, guys? Uh, it's really late right now. Um, I think it is. I can't really tell. Let's see. 1.23 uh, a.m. I've been up since about 8 a.m. this morning. Um, so I took a long time trying to figure out how to do the small partition area right here. I wasn't sure how I was gonna get the shape exactly right because this this board here, this stuff is like, it's good, but it's kind of not, it, it like forms a little bit too much to the corners right here, um, even when it's off. So um, I didn't wanna go by that. So what I did was I traced it with pieces of paper, then I used pieces of paper and cut out um, like these perfect little templates right here, and then I had to reference the reference the the actual shape of the car, and then uh, how much of a lip that I wanted for the Lexan to be able to uh, bolt onto, and then this is of course the area that I'm going to be cutting out, and then this is going to be a bend, a uh, 90 degree bend, so that I can bolt it into place while I'm fitting it, and that way. I can make sure it fits right before it's welded in. Um, and I guess just make that whole process easier for me. So the only bad part is I'm gonna need an actual bender for for that uh, 90 degree bend on the bottom right there. But I can do that tomorrow at Able Shop. So um, yeah, so uh, this probably took me <laughs> roughly three and a half hours. So that's probably, you know, like most of the metal dudes are probably like, what an idiot. but you know, I don't know how to do it, so I had to go really slow and really think it through to make sure that I did it correctly in the way that I wanted it. So, yeah, but uh, pumped that it's all welded and this is all good. So I'm going to cut this out with uh, the sheet metal shears over here and take it to the shop tomorrow. So calling it a night. Peace. Yeah. Just a quick test fit. Aaron loaded that. So we are here at Los Angeles. We're gonna go ahead and bend this. It's gonna be a 90 degree. You're ready to go. What's up, dude? You're ready to go. Hey, man, back up, back up, back up. Oh, shout out on Instagram. So we're gonna do uh, a 90 degree on the bottom and then a 45 on top. All right. What did you just do? Oh, man, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, I just got this set up so you can finish making your part. Sick. Hold it up. Not an exact science, or it can be. <laughs> but the metal's too thick for the brake. Sometimes you need a little help. <laughs> 